Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Good morning. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Welcome to the Lorain County Board of Commissioners meeting, September 24, 2014. Ms. Beidelman, would you like to give our prayer this morning? Just going to share with you the serenity prayer this morning. It says, God grant us the sincerity to accept the things we cannot change and courage to change the things we can and wisdom to know the difference. We pray that for our commissioners and their team today and we know that Lorain County is on the verge of great change and we speak that and we'll continue to speak that and we believe you for the best results and we thank you we have the best people leading this county. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Commissioner Williams has the dog today. Yeah, I'm going to allow our uh, um, deputy dog warden to come out and show the dancing dog today that we have here. Uh, go ahead and uh, provide information and introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, we got our female pan chihuahua pug mix here, and she was she came in on the 19th. She's available on the 25th. She wants to <laughs> we are pretty full at the kennel in your capacity, so come on down and adopt a new best friend and help us out, huh? Pretty girl. Wow, <laughs> look at her. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> start today with the presentation my name is Rocky Campana and I'm with Boast Workplace Benefits my address is 6155 Park Square Drive Suite 7 Lorraine Ohio 44053 uh, purpose of why I'm here and one of the reasons I joined Boast is uh, they're a national company and they've been around for about eight years about a year and a half ago they came out with the it's not an insurance product it's more of a service card that we've been having great success offering it to employers and to direct consumers. Direct consumers would be anybody that walked into my office in previous years and wanted health insurance or those that are buying health insurance on the Affordable Care Act program. One of the reasons it's becoming more popular since the Affordable Care Act took over is where health insurance is going. Uh, about five years ago, a lot of the plans had a $10, $20 office visit copayment. With Affordable Care Act, there is more out of pocket for the consumer when they go to the office visit. An example of this would be I have a few of the Medical Mutual Affordable Care Act exchange plans showing on the screen. And when you look, for office visits, it's zero after deductible. So that means if someone goes to their primary care physician and they have a $6,000 deductible, it's going to be billed to Medical Mutual and they're going to be responsible for the office visit discount, which would may be about $70. That's their responsibility. Another program is the Medical Mutual Bronze. First three office visits are a $40 office copayment. After those first three office visits, then it's subject to their deductible and works similar to the first example. And then the $2,000 silver, again, first three office visits, then they have to go towards their deductible. So the consumer is paying a lot more. Another portion of the Affordable Care Act is they're expecting by 2017 there's going to be a primary care physician shortage because so many people are jumping onto health insurance. When I call my primary care physician, it takes me about four days to get in, so we always go to Walgreens. Walgreens, I'm paying more money out of pocket. So with all of this in mind, we put together this service package. 
on it, we call it the Boast Advantage card, and there's four different options on our base, but we can create programs based on the needs of the person that we're talking to. The number one feature on this is Teladoc. What Teladoc is, if you're not familiar, you get a card, you call an 800 number, and you talk to a triage nurse. They're gonna ask you what your symptoms are. Within 15 minutes, a board certified doctor will call you back. This will be good for about 70% of your normal office visits, especially with children. The unique thing about our Teladoc program versus Medical Mutuals, who are now offering it, you have a zero consult fee when you call Teladoc and you talk to them using our card. So those people that are gonna be paying their deductible when they go to an office visit, if they have a common cold, call our 800 number, they talk to the board certified doctor, they can get prescribed antibiotics and medications to a local pharmacy. Go ahead. They can get prescribed medications to a local pharmacy and they pay nothing for that visit, okay? The common uses of it is cold and flu symptoms, bronchitis, allergy, poison eye, pink eye. Pink eye was my hot button. My daughter had it three years ago. All four of us had to make an office visit, had to pay our co-payment to get the eye drops, which we know we needed. If we had Teladoc back then, we could have just called, had it all called into the pharmacy, it would have saved us money. And it would have also not hit our claims experience. Some of the other benefits on this are pharmacy. Again, high deductible plans when you go to the pharmacy, you're gonna be paying 100% of your pharmaceutical charge and it's gonna be subject to your deductible. So what we tell all of our consumers on a high deductible plan is use your insurance card, use your Boast Advantage card, swipe it at the pharmacy, see which one's gonna be cheaper. It's not always gonna be cheaper on our plan, but one guy had a migraine needle he needed to get for his wife, $1,700 with Medical Mutuals, 650 with ours. So we tell them to always swipe it to find out which way is gonna save them money. The lab and imaging is another way the consumer can save additional money. They call an 800 number if they need an MRI or bone scan. They're gonna do a geographical search and tell you the cheapest place to go. In Columbus, the swing was $3,300 at one hospital, $300 at a facility 10 miles away. Then there's dental and vision care discounts. Dental and vision for employers is not that big of a feature on this card, but for the direct people that walk in my office, they don't wanna spend the $60 a month for dental care for their family. It gets too expensive, especially with the limits. This at least gives them a 60% discount on some of the dental services that they have. Then there's other features that you can add on it. My favorite one is the medical health advisor, which is located over on uh, the right side. My son had an appendectomy in May. We went to EMH uh, emergency room. They transported him to Rainbow Babies, which is out of network on Medical Mutual. When I got out of the hospital, I called Medical Mutual, asked if it was gonna be covered in network. They said yes, because it was an emergency. Then I got a $7,500 bill. So I appealed to Medical Mutual, it was denied. After it was denied, I contacted them. I signed a HIPAA authorization, I sent all my bills. They're now negotiating between UH and Medical Mutual on my behalf, and they give me weekly updates. So what this card really is, is ways for the residents of Lorraine County to save money and be more educated and ask questions when they have their health plans. And it also gives them some features where Affordable Care Act is costing them more money. They could use it to save the money on that. Why I'm proposing it to you is since it is not an insurance program, I was thinking if the commissioners wanted to, they can actually create their plan and co-brand it. So it could become a Lorraine County card. The Lorraine County card for everyone that's sold in Lorraine County can be money in the general fund. How much money, that's all based on which programs you guys feel comfortable with putting in, what the price point's gonna be, and how we're gonna market it to the residents of Lorain County. Right here is an example of a brokerage firm that's across the state in Ohio. This is the program that they wanted to put together to market to all their uh, brokers for the fourth quarter this year. And then in the packet that I gave you, for each of the benefits that are there, I put a summary description so after the meeting you can look and see how they would help out. But this is a really flexible program. If you did decide to go with it, you can market to employers. You can also market it to all the residents of Lorraine County that have to get it through uh, Affordable Care Act or they go to their local insurance agent for direct policies. I have a question, sure, Rocky. Uh, 
In regards to the Affordable Care Act, where does this fit uh, if you're enrolled in an Affordable Care Act plan? The Affordable Care Act, if you earn the subsidies from the plan, right. all that's doing is really helping out if most people that I helped last year are putting it towards their monthly premium, okay? okay. So if they have a $400 a month subsidy and the health plan that they're picking is $800, they're only paying the $400 a month they still are responsible for all of that out of pocket when they go to the doctors that are in the first three It's three almost slides. like a supplemental would be then. It, pretty much. The Medicare yeah, it's, it, and again, <coughs> this isn't gonna be like the, like a supplemental plan that's offered here where it pays them money. Okay. It's just giving them an option. Instead of going to the doctors because little Jimmy has a sinus infection, call Teladoc and you have a zero consult fee. So it's just giving them different ways to be smart, call the teledoc to pay nothing or to call the other carriers or the other phone numbers to try to save money while they're using their $6,000 high deductible plan. And then the teledoc calls in their prescription and the local pharmacy and then it's just like going through an office visit. Correct. Okay. And if there's a child on the plan, a pediatrician will actually call and teledoc actually tries to make sure the doctor that you talked to previously, if you have to call back, is the one that answers or returns your phone call if they're available. And if you have a primary care physician, they can send the records to your primary care physician afterwards. This is almost a souped up like prescription card we've had for years with the discounts for the residents that cover the exactly. difference. <coughs> but this would cost a resident how much to have this card? And that's where I said it all depends on which features you want to well, offer just say to the just resident. for the teledoc like the the first one when you look at that brochure that I have in there on a direct basis it's a 1599 a month no matter how many f family members are in there so I have an individual person they pay 1599 a month I have a person that has seven children they still pay 1599 a month the Cadillac plan on that brochure that has all of our features is 2999 a month And then if you convince an employer to pay for it, then there's discounts on it. So that $15.99 a month, if an employer pays, becomes $9.99 a month. And I have a few local employers that are offering it because they're self-funded and they wanted to transfer some of this. <coughs> and uh, we're doing a big campaign in there and it's been going smoothly. Questions, board? No. Let me take a look at this. And Appreciate it, Rocky. Hey, thank, thank you very you. much for listening. Yeah, thanks for coming in. <laughs> Madam Clerk, can we move to uh, Keith Bailey in a solid waste presentation on market development credits? Because yes, of the exactly. texture in the wall, you really couldn't tell anything on the slide. Here we go.
a successful project. It was very much so, commissioners. I'm very pleased with it. And uh, that's what we're here to talk about today is district market development grants, all right? We have the board is pleased to announce that we ha still have $52,000 in the account to get the award this year to worthy projects that uh, the content of the material going in these projects must be 50% post-consumer, post-industrial, and they require a dollar-for-dollar dollar match. Um, if there's a group that can't meet the match, then they need to talk with me and we'll, we'll discuss that with the board before we make an award, all right, just like we did here. Um, we, deadline for these grants are March, uh, October 23rd of this year, 4 p.m., uh, and we'll be taking applications up to then and I'll be bringing them down sometime in November for award, all right? And you just awarded three recently, so, which was Elyria Township, one of the schools with the playground again here in Elyria, and uh, I forget what the fourth one was, but there have been three awarded here recently. So then we're moving along with these projects. They really look nice. And now Mr. Cordes has twisted my arm, and then we're going to do uh, rubber mulch around your building and your mm -hmm. planter. So we're going to be doing that as well. Wonderful. So uh, yeah. well, it's a great demonstration area for you to show off the product. <coughs> Oh. It's a little bit different than the school ground mulch. It's the ground a lot thinner. So we'll, we'll have, be having that in the future installed. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Keith, I want to say thank you on that. I was actually at the center um, a few years back when I saw individuals in power wheelchairs or uh, custom manual chairs, and they weren't able to go out onto the playground because the chairs would actually sink into the mulch. And... Um, beautiful days and it was just uh, very sad to see kids that weren't able to go out and enjoy that new equipment so I appreciate all the work that you did and your staff to make that uh, happen and I'm going to ask you to reach out to another group um, and the DAV uh, in uh, 20 in the city of Lorraine uh, they need some assistance this one may be a little unusual on what they need but if you could reach out to Fred out there and talk to him to see if we could help him out um, I think they may need uh, some encouragement and someone to kind of walk them through the process to just show them it's not as scary as what they may think <coughs> it is yeah, talk to me on that I know what the project potentially could be there and I have some ideas on that we've talked about that already yeah. the other thing I want to point out on on this last one with the mulch this was an organization that couldn't really uh, conform to our grant requirements. A couple of years ago, we shifted to a uh, do and get type grant. Uh, that is, they would have to perform the uh, the uh, services or purchase the services or materials that they were going to ultimately use that qualify under the grant, and then they would have to seek reimbursement after it was completed. Some of the organizations don't have the upfront money to do that, but we've also had problems where we let money go out and we have only had to go chase the money because the project didn't get completed. So this time we took an approach to project management with, with this grant where we worked on the ordering and, and the work that needed to be done with all our team so that they didn't have to have the infusion of cash up front. So it's just a matter of working a little bit differently and finding a way to be successful with the grants. So while people upstairs were the ones that actually did all of, not the physical work, but all the work moving the product along. And then they had volunteers, I understand, move the old mulch. Yes, uh, they had the volunteers playground. from the school. And the board actually did it while he was gone on vacation when he came back the mulch was in. Uh, our group at the collection center uh, transported our uh, equipment, our fork truck and bobcat to the location and we offloaded all the bags for them so they would have them sitting there waiting for them to install. So that was all done by our local team. Yeah, right. it, worked out, it worked out real well. You can always find a way to get things done and people really want to work together truly uh, towards a, a good outcome. So great job, Keith. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Madam Clerk. Under resolutions, number one, investments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Appropriations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Transfers. So moved. Second. Discussion. 
Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. No advances, no repayments, requisitions? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Travel? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Bills? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under the commissioners authorize various personnel actions as indicated on in the summary sheet for employees <coughs> within the jurisdiction of Lorraine County Commissioners? Mr. Cordes. Thank you, Commissioner Kalo. I do have a number of potential personnel issues with regards to uh, hirings at Golden Acres, um, possibly uh, community development. Also, want to update you on uh, ongoing. Well, actually, it's yeah, it's, a, it's ongoing litigation uh, and potential sale of real estate. Those three topics are allowable under the Sunshine Act for executive session discussion. So I'd ask at the conclusion of our regular board meeting today, we go into executive session, we talk about those items that I've identified. Thank you. Thank you. Weigh the reading of the minutes of September 10th. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Authorize the increase of Judge Balancey, Avon Lake Municipal Court salary to bi weekly rate of $957.69 which is the county's two-fifth share due to this position became full-time effective September 15, 2014. So moved. Second. Discussion. Do you want to say I told you so or anything? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, I just want to point out that you know, while your administrator was resoundingly beat up a little bit on this issue, my figures were the, were the correct figures on how much this is ultimately going to cost. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and in fact, they have now made petition to go back and pay retro benefits uh, to this position that could cost us even more money. So I, you know, I, I don't always like to be, you know, stick in the mud, but it, it's a lot more money than they indicated. So uh, I'm not going to pull out my old spreadsheets and say I told you so, but I told you so. <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> Mr. Kayla. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Under Community Development, award contract to Precision Paving, Inc., Milan, in the amount of $53,115 for the North Ridgeville Senior Center Parking Lot Resurfacing Project Phase 2014. Three bids were opened on September 10th, this being the most responsive, complying with specifications. The amount includes a contingency with unforeseen change orders to be paid from the Capital Improvement Construction Account, and $11,335 will be paid by the City of North Ridgeville. Issue notice to proceed on or before September 25th and complete on or before November 26th. Authorize administrator to notify auditor to release retained shape completion of project. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Award contract to Euclid Jalysis, Inc., Euclid, in the amount of $18,820 for the North Ridgeville Senior Center ADA Renovation Improvements Phase 2 project to be paid from the Capital Improvement Construction Account. Two bids were received on September 10th, this being the most responsive, complying with specifications. Issue notice to proceed on or before September 25th and complete on or before December 15th. And authorize the administrator to notify the auditor to release retainage and completion of the project. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under Golden Acres, reject all bids received on September 9th for Golden Acres roof replacement project and re advertise <coughs> in 2014 for construction in 2015. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Under Job and Family, authorized purchase service agreement with El Centro to Services Solutions Inc. Lorraine for Business English and Work Experience Program for TANF participants for fiscal year 15 in the amount not to exceed $24,292, effective October 1st, 2014 through September 3rd, 2015. <laughs> authorized director to execute and amend for changes in program and increase on behalf of the pro board with prosecutors approval to form. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Authorized purchase service agreement with Common Ground Overland to provide personal development training classes to OWF recipients in fiscal year 15 in the amount not to exceed $160,579, effective October 1st, 2014 through September 3rd, 2015. Authorized director to execute amend for changes in programming and increase on behalf of the board with prosecutors approval as to form. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Authorized purchase service agreement with vocational guidance services, Elyria, for work program for fiscal year 15 in the amount not to exceed $119,204.25, effective October 1st, 2014, 
effect of October 1, 2014 through September 3, 2015. Authorize director to execute amend for changes in programming and increase on behalf of the Board of Prosecutors approval as to form. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Mr. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Authorize purchase service agreement with Lorain County Children's Services for child welfare services using Title 20 federal block grant funds in the amount not to exceed 500000 effective retroactive to July 1, 2014 through September 30, 2014. Authorize director to execute and amend for changes in programming and increase on behalf of the Board of Prosecutors approval as to form. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Authorize agreement with Cronus, Boston, Massachusetts, annual maintenance of timekeeping system not to exceed $10,348.66. Authorized director to execute and amend for changes in programming and increase on behalf of the board with prosecutors approval as to form. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under sanitary, amend resolution 13 1000 adopted December 18, 2013, <coughs> entering an agreement with KE McCartney and Associates Mansfield for various general engineering consulting services on task order basis for 24 months. Said amendment is to reflect an additional 15000 for pheasant run contract development. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under transit, submit application to NOACA for proposed federal aid project for final phase <coughs> of the Marine County Transportation Center. So moved. Second. Discussion. Yeah, Mr. Cordes, you want to give us an update on where we're sitting with that? I'm <coughs> with the program, but do you want to update us on the Transportation Center? Is well, that ready for. Actually, I, I think that <coughs> it's probably time to uh, make a presentation here. You know, maybe we can do right. that next week. Okay. This, uh, this application is, is one that will. Uh, transform our, our current funds into a form that could potentially be used for this project. As you know, we've, we've continued to fund other transit systems around the state of Ohio with our allocation of federal dollars. We'd like it, to it, share. Uh, we like to share, but I'd rather be stingy with, the, with those funds. Uh, but I know that the people up in Sandusky and down in Medina, Medina and so forth, they're, they're very grateful. I'm surprised they don't send us letters of thank you for letting them have our, our funds. Uh, that said, we have funds that were still allocated um, that are decreasing each year because we're not using them. I've, I've asked the uh, Federal, Tra Federal Transit Authority uh, out of Chicago if we could convert those funds to capital use rather than operational use and, and they're agreeable to that but we have to make the proper applications and this is the first step in that application so I'm hoping we use those funds otherwise we, we can just ride the bus over in somebody else's community because that's where our money's going to go okay. and now all for what lack of matching money local match dollars yep. so how about the matching dollars turning our money into their money Mr. Kayla aye Ms. Kowski aye Mr. Williams aye under the engineer, amend resolution 13682 adopted July 31st, 2013, authorizing engineer to execute the contract prepared by ODOT with RE Warner and Associates Westlake for the construction, administration, and inspection services of Cali Road widening and resurfacing <coughs> project in the amount of $289,530. Said amendment is to reflect the funding source will be as follows 80% federal funds, $231,624. OPWC $39,398.48 and from the MVGT account $18,507.52. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Reject the bids received August 5, 2014 for Butternut Ridge Road Resurfacing Project, Carlisle Township. Engineer has requested NOACA increase the federal funding on the project and advertise will be done later this year for construction 2015. So moved. Second. Discussion. Yeah, actually, what happened here, there were some additional funds left over that the engineer applied for, and I met with Grace Galucci on it. It looks like we'll be fine for next year. Bob, any comments on this? Yeah, the, it goes for... <coughs> yeah, commissioners, with the um, process through NOACA, the Finance Committee approved it, I believe, last Friday. Correct. It has to go for final board approval in October. Um, that gives us, we didn't have enough time then to award the contract. And actually, getting this late in the season, it makes sense to rebid it and then just start the construction in the spring. Right. I attended the finance committee meeting prior to my governance committee and heard the approval process. So we'll be fine at board next month. Yep. Thanks, Bob. 
Mr. Kalin? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Approve and enter in a federal state funds exchange agreement with ODOT for Pitts, Pitts Road Bridge Project. This will allow the engineer's office to be lead agency and establish responsibilities and procedures for administration of the project. Authorize the engineer to execute all necessary documents on behalf of the board with prosecutors approve as to form. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Approve and enter an LPA contract with KMJM Land Services, LLC, Broadview Heights in the amount of $7,150 to assist with additional right-of-way acquisition services for Jones Roads Bridge Replacement Project to be paid from the Bridge Engineering Project account and authorize the engineer to execute on behalf of the Board of Prosecutors approve us to form. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Cortez? I have no additional comments this morning. Thank you. Mr. Penwalski? I don't have anything to report at this time. Commissioner's report. Um, just a couple things. Um, there's an opportunity to order some pavers for uh, a dedication for November 9th. It's a Sunday. It's going to be at Avon, Avon Lake Post, VFW Post 735. It's a memorial, and the pavers are $50 each. Um, God bless you. If you would like to participate, you can call Barb Gersna at 440-666-1353. And you, you can get uh, an order form for that if you're interested. Um, this past weekend on Saturday, I got to do my eighth year in a, in a row for judging the contest at the Doggy Do Festival. Um, gets bigger and bigger every year, and we probably had the best weather this past Saturday than we've ever had. Um, they had like 37 vendors and 25 rescue groups, so it was a really, really nice time. And you saw the dog here this morning probably would have won the dancing dog contest. It was really cute. Um, I asked Jody Barilla to be here today um, because we had put on hold for two weeks the uh, urine testing. Um, did you have, you have not had a chance to meet with her? I haven't had a chance to meet with her. Actually, <clears throat> when we were in Mr. Cordes's office this week and I stepped out because of a phone call, that was Mercy calling me back. So. And I spoke with Mr. Cordes afterwards. Okay. Uh, and this was uh, yesterday. Um, we are going to set up a time to go through and sit down with them. They are able to meet all the requirements uh, that was in the proposal. Uh, Mr. Cortez, one of the things that they come up in the proposal was the storage of the samples. Now, I don't believe that <coughs> when you were looking into this, that that was part of it. And I don't recall long-term storage of samples, and I don't have, well, I don't, well, we don't presently have that capability, nor have, have I, even looked into potentially having that capability. So it was when you informed me that way yesterday. It was it was a, it was news to me. Is it consider? Are you saying it's considered evidence? Is that Is it correct? Evidence? So Jody, do you do we have to store those samples? I actually I don't know. I, that's um, I think our biggest concern is just the testing of it. I'm not sure how long it needs to be stored after it's tested. No. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if we how much of a need for sort of that evidence. Okay. Because uh, talking with the different agencies, I spoke with the State Highway Patrol Crime Lab, and I spoke with um, Mercy. Um, there's only a few agencies in the country that can actually um, do the storage, and normally they keep them for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then there's a fee in order to go back if you would need a case. So, the example, if um, you're using it uh, because somebody is claiming um, – uh, some type of defense um, and they need it retested mm -hmm. it would have to be stored there the, the other concern I had talking with multiple agencies using what was a part-time person is what we thought we could get it by with we we had uh, yes a uh, limited amount of hours a uh, part-time person I believe the number that you were quoting on the high end was around 800 cases the state highway patrol they do about a thousand cases a month they have multiple machines on there, and by all means, they're looking at their figures would be a, a budget of a, around a half million dollars to do this type of testing for a, fifth, a 10 to 15 panel test to go through, store it, be able to turn it around in 24 hours, and then have it uh, reported. I'm not sure what you're saying. Your budget was lower than that. Oh, yes. Much lower. Yes. They use around five people to do a thousand tests for the state. Well, I can't. So the well, state has I all the money. Yeah, they have all the money. They have a local government. But even, at, even with 
private companies, they utilize more people because of the demand to go through and to do the type of testing. I, yep. uh, all I can tell you with regard to cost is that I did a uh, cost analysis and, and an absorption analysis of uh, the overhead to, to do this, and I, I gave you a figure, and I'll be honest right. with you, Commissioner, I, I, I think the figure's accurate. Uh, the, the, uh, I, I don't know why the state's using so many people, um, but most of the testing we do would be five, five panels. And nine was it five and nine between seven and ten panel I think was what we were looking at yeah the mm -hmm. five is the in intro level mm -hmm. one and I think that's most of the outside agencies using that because of the cost and then yours was a little bit more complicated depending on what you were looking for mm -hmm. yeah I believe in there in that panel it actually stated it was more you were looking at like a 10 up to a 10 depending on you uh, know what we're I testing thought it was a for 10 to 12 or 10 to 15 we we have estimated cost and and I've I've actually put in uh, some additional cost to the to for overhead and so forth, but I think we said five dollars a panel, didn't we? Uh, at I don't remember what I had. I mm. didn't know that that was going to be an issue this morning. But I think mm. I think we estimated our cost at five dollars for each each requested test, with mm. the minimum being five. Mm. I could tell you that uh, talking to different agencies, five dollars a panel doesn't even come close to for a ten to fifteen panel test doesn't come close to covering their costs. Uh, I got the cost. I, um, I, 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 so you're saying this is a good deal, then? Basically, if we can do this for ten thousand, then we should go for it. I'm saying that uh, it's too good of a deal, in my opinion. When you talk with multiple agencies, and I, and I don't mean to but those put are you on the spot. profit agencies. We're well, not you, trying you to make a profit. It, it, you can put me on the spot because here, here's the easy thing. It, it's the cost that, of doing business. They have multiple clients that they have that they reach out to. And the cost to go through to do the test, the, uh, the maintenance of the machines, uh, the calibrations of the machines, having the personnel there to go through, take the samples, do the testing of the samples. The overhead on that per test is going to be more than five dollars. Let, let, let me speak to that, if I may. <coughs> well, I need to. <laughs> right. First of all, we're not capturing the samples, right. so we don't have any cost with regard to personnel to capture the samples. So I, I didn't figure in observation time, uh, sample capturing, et cetera, et cetera. You take care of that currently yourself, correct? It depends. I mean, I, our, um, certainly our probation officers do do a lot of the capturing. Okay. Um, I know when the forensic lab was open before, there was also, you know, some of, sometimes we send people over there and then they, um, you know, gave the sample there. Right. But I'll, we I'll, could do it either way. Well, our, our setup was for the samples to be sent to us and given to us. We. The, uh, when the forensic lab, they had a lot more people. And I actually have to agree in part with Commissioner Williams because the forensic lab had quite a few people working there. We're going to, you know, a different piece of equipment. I, the costs are easy to identify. They give us the actual cost for the materials to do the test. So I, I really didn't have to do a lot of uh, analyzing of, of the data. And all we had to do was take that actual cost per test and then add a reasonable amount of overhead and salary time to it and, and come up with what we thought was a reasonable expectation of the cost. I, I don't know why. Um, well, I, I think what, what I'm hearing from you is we're not comparing apples to apples on it with what the proposal was that was written up that I sent out to the companies and having them go through uh, and be able to collect the, um, the sample, test the sample, store the sample. I didn't have any storage. Right. And, you know, actually collecting it as well. Um, that's where they're saying that they cannot meet that $5 per test on there. Prob they probably However, can. what they can do is what they're, the current uh, facility that you're using out in California or you are using, mm -hmm. they're very close to the same cost of that with everything. And they have multiple locations in uh, Lorain County where we can actually have people go there from 8 to 4 o'clock and then provide the testing um, test results within 24 hours. So what I would like to do um, is set up a meeting with you and with um, the director to go through, make sure that we have everything that we ac actually need, and then get a true cost comparison on it and then move forward. Yeah, and that's, um, I mean, I've been available. I'm, I'm yeah. he, he, apologized. he apologized. He's been down in Cincinnati and um, he just hasn't been able to get back to me. We spoke on Tuesday, and he gave me the information. We had a, a great dialogue. 
Is that Rick? Yes. Yeah, I know. I know Rick. I mean, I work with Rick. Right. We on have relationships. Yeah. With them, I, so. I mean, I, I like Rick. I, I've known him a while. We've 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 uh, we've had good partnerships and collaborations uh, with Mercy, especially with decreasing the cost for the residents with TB services right. and so forth. I, I think an important consideration here uh, is the, the two things that, that um, well, actually catch, capturing the samples wouldn't be too hard for us because we have staff over there working anyway, so they're there. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually making sure we have a suitable capture point to utilize. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the last one, though, I'm, I'm not prepared to really to do. I don't see the, our ability to do that, and that would be long-term storage of samples. If it's, if it's evidence, I know the new rules of, of maintaining evidence have changed significantly in the last couple of years. In fact, they're very burdensome. Um, I'm wondering how they're going to be able to treat that with urine samples. Well, and I guess in, you know, in talking to my people, storage of the samples to maintain it for evidence was never identified as one of our needs or issues. So I have to believe that that's not something that we need at this point. Who, who so said, I don't know that did that's... Did you say it went out in an R? It, it, w it was in the... Um, um, Rick brought it up that it was actually in the proposal that I sent. I can't remember who said that to me. Did you, uh, with did you the send information? That no, no, I no because yeah, I don't. It wasn't a <coughs> formal proposal. It was just kind of um, what the type of test that they needed. Because we were talking a five to nine panel test, but I do remember in the email it was higher, and then there was other things in there. I can't yeah, they did, I didn't prepare an RFP, so it didn't right. it didn't come from us. Uh, I. And this is a new, and as I indicated to you, uh, we've been doing this, we were doing it for a significant number of years, and we never maintained the samples past right. the original test. Right. I don't think this is like the evidence that they're ex asking us to keep yeah. in perpetuity. <clears throat> you know, as we do at Court of Common Pleas, this is drug testing. Right. And if they, it's a yes or no or whatever degree yes of Levels, using right. Levels. I think DNA testing, I could see that there'd be a need yeah. for long-term storage because right. those are the types of cases that you see come back years later and retest and, you yeah. know, part well, of I the know defense. Well, I know with corporations, testing, corporations actually keep the sample, and the reason they keep the sample is if you have an individual that did pass um, test positive, they can go through and they can ask for an appeal, and then the first thing the attorney does is ask to have the, them retested. If you don't have that sample... You basically lose. I think in this in case, the we're talking about juveniles at this right. point, and yeah. it's more of keeping yeah. them under control and or getting them into programs mm -hmm. that fix their issues, dealing right. with the drug problem, mm -hmm. so. more than it is for a lifetime criminal mm -hmm. issue. Or in connection with employment, I could see where that might be more mm -hmm. of an issue right. as far as, you know, if someone's employment is jeopardized as a result of a, of a positive test, I could mm -hmm. see where those rules might be a little different. But for our purposes... Okay. Well, like I said, uh, their price is very comparable to what you were paying uh, to send it out to be tested, and it was for everything. So I think if we sit down and actually have a dialogue with Rick and go through what your needs are, if it is a five-panel test, how many are you going to have on that? How many are you going to need to have a ten-panel test done on and uh, provide those numbers to them and give it to them um, in writing? We should be able to work something out. Well, if we can have really quick on this time we've been kicking the can down the road for a few months and um, a, a couple of weeks but um no, we've we been can, talking about this for a couple of months i mean then you've got in with mercy so if we can get this moving uh what we can do is um i'll talk with rick i'll set up an appointment for next week okay, okay. i mean i can you know I'll all right we'll probably just my... meet uh at uh, his facility i think and then you can take a tour if you need to that's fine so the okay. probationers will have to go to another facility to give the urine sample and then they would be tested in i mean it won't be an instantaneous test is that what we're saying no it would be an instant they you can do it two ways they're saying that they actually take the sample sometimes mm -hmm. and then they drop it off or send it out for testing or you can actually have them go to one of the mercy facilities and then have them go in there and be tested. And I thought that's what was proposed uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, I, that's, um, yeah, a few weeks ago that, yeah, I, I, often our probation officers are the ones taking the samples and then they, you know, need the levels tested. So we would be collecting, there are times, um, probably more when we're asking that adults be tested, that we may actually be sending them to, a, you know, sending them to the lab to capture the sample. Um, 
But yeah, obviously then transportation becomes an issue as it does just with those folks coming to court. But that's a discussion um, but I yeah, had last night with Mr. Williams when I saw him at the debate. That's the discussion when he brought it up to me. I said, we still got transportation. Said, How do you get in there? Make sure they get there within a timely manner or don't stop at the local GNC and find something to clean their system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I would think that they're going to, <laughs> if you're telling them to go somewhere anyway, which she was request, or requested to have a sample, to have the ability to go there, mm -hmm. they're going to do that no matter yeah, what. Yeah, right across the street, I think there's a timeline issue that go over there now. Correct? Yeah. That's okay. so, but uh, okay. we'll have more information. Um, I'll send you an email with a uh, <coughs> meeting notice for next week. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Before the meet next week's meeting, hopefully Monday or Tuesday, uh, so we can wrap this up next week. I will try. I'll ask you if his uh, schedule is available for it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to say was uh, brought up the Ohio, uh, State Patrol. I just want to thank them for their their diligent um, investigation on the lady that hit uh, the deputy last week. Um, they finally found her, and hopefully she'll be brought to justice. I'm sending my report. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, long report today. Uh, first of all, we had the NOACA annual meeting. Uh, congratulations out to outgoing Geauga County Commissioner Mary Samiti, who was awarded the Earn Fellow Award for Regionalism and Cooperation amongst the county. She's done a great job for 10, 12 years she's been there. Uh, we're going to miss her. I'd uh, like to thank Congresswoman Captor and Congressman Gibbs, two of the panelists who held discussion on highway funds and how we're going to look at dollars moving forward in regards to shrinking funds and greater needs. Uh, very good day, great turnout, probably the best we've ever had. Over 250 people attended the summit information. Also, Mexican Independence Day. Again, congratulations, Mexican Mutual, great event. Also, the County Commissioners Association met our board. Uh, it was a full day because we hadn't met in August due to the summer recess, but uh, we talked about Franklin County just brought out a local foods initiative. Uh, their board passed a resolution in regards to working with uh, the farmers in the rural all the way to getting the local foods into their schools. It's a great program. I'll get copies of that to the commissioners. Uh, I think something we ought to consider here, especially in regards to this being such a, you know, being the rural urban split and the amount of farmers we have here, really pushing ourselves up another level or two. Uh, also, big discussion. Bob, you're here. might help. Salt prices this year. Uh, I don't know if you've been working with the engineer at all on that but everyone's found prices have about tripled. Uh, last year's prices were 32 to $35 a ton. They're now pushing $105. The state went out as a bid in a collaboration with 18 counties and came in at $102 a ton. So that's gonna hit all of our uh, funds heavily this year and there were discussions of possible collusion as has happened 20 years ago. In Price regard fixing. Exactly. Uh, major concerns how the cost could have tripled. So a they lot know of discussion. It's going to be a bad winter. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> also, Jim, oh. we have funding. There's been uh, major discussions on re reallocating the dislocated worker dollars. There are meetings going on currently. Uh, the adult services and youth services dollars stay pretty static, but we've had some up major ups and downs in regards to the funding for dislocated workers. We're looking for a hold harmless cause. I didn't get a chance to speak to Mike Longo about that at I, all. I, I have information from you. I've been tracking that pretty closely. Okay. <clears throat> I can send you this afternoon okay. some thought process on that. I'm, I'm a little concerned about the, the new formula. Uh, we have been relatively stable in Lorain County. Uh, under the, the new allocation formula, I think we'll lose, we'll lose some money. Mm -hmm. I, I can't really completely comprehend the total dollar amount. Uh, but 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 clearly um, the new formula is not in our best interest. They said some counties but, lose up to thirty percent and are dislocated. Well, I don't I think I don't think we're in line for that kind of, of kind shifting. Of, okay. <laughs> of that shifting of those dollars, uh, the the um, uh, but but I but I do have some concerns. But but also let me state this. The, what they're looking at is probably a better way of balancing all the resources around the state. I, I don't want to be 
She's oh, probably looking for the sheriff there. So, that's yeah. why I locked that I, door. I, <laughs> I, I don't want to uh, to be negative on on what they're trying to do simply because we have a little bit of a decrease in funding. The this, the way they've been doing it is not really the best way for a holistic view of what the state does with the allocations. So I'll give you information on that, and and it may it may mean some shifting of our dollars, but it may improve the overall condition of. Uh, neighboring communities that we rely upon too. So we have to look at it with a broader paintbrush. Yeah, they're looking that, for input currently. We have until right. September 30th to. I'll, I'll talk with you and give you some some thinking points on it, and then we can have further discussion. Uh, but uh, we we are looking at it. And I I thought it was going to be up at CCO last week. Were you, or did your next meeting? No, I was week? there last week. Right, and they brought it up at CCO. That's where one of our discussion points okay. where it came out of committee. So that was Friday, and I didn't see you through the weekend. And Monday, I was busy on the huh. appointment, and I think, like I said, I got it on my list. I'm, so. I'm glad CCO is looking at it. Right. You you may find though that that we're in the minority position with regard to uh, how things should be allocated, but we'll get together on it. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Also, uh, big discussion on how the state's going to fund the addiction and mental health issues. Uh, a lot of discussion from all the different organizations partnering there, looking for more dollars to address those issues and the water quality issue. Uh, they've actually formed a subcommittee. Most of the Lake Abundant Commissioners will be serving on that subcommittee to deal with the algal bloom and how we can work with uh, the manure runoff and such that are affecting and working with our farmers on that. Also, a uh, press release came out, I just received in my email yesterday, from September 13th, the U.S. Department of Agriculture along with the Farm Services Agency uh, designates seven counties in Ohio as primary natural disaster areas. Uh, Lorain County being one of those, Ashtabula, Geauga, Jackson, Lake Lorain, Porridge, and Summit. There are low interest loans out there for our farmers who got hurt from the terrible freeze from January 2nd through April 17th, 2014. Uh, application is through, let's see, they've got additional permit. let's see, these releases. Oh, I will have to get the actual contact person on this. I don't see it on this email, but then maybe help them put it up as to where our farmers can contact in regards to the loan, just loans due to damages. What about so homeowners? I think that was on two weeks no, this ago is for the, this is the USDA, right. This oh. is the Farm Services mm -hmm. Agency, but it wasn't talked about. No, it was just on correspondence. Right, so ago. I figure I'd bring it up that it's public so everybody can hear about it. Uh, let's see what else we have. I think that's the end of my report. <laughs> Are you sure? Yep, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, actually, a lot of running around. Uh, <clears throat> it's funny, I got my um, oil changed and went with a, just a standard oil in early September. My oil light already came on, so <laughs> putting a lot of miles on the car, just going from event to event. Um, must say, I'm looking forward to buying a treadmill from going to all these steak fry dinners uh, uh, throughout the county. But... Uh, just uh, attending events, hearing what uh, individuals have to say, what their concerns are, and uh, just pre pre um, really appreciate everyone sending me the invites uh, to get out and uh, talk with um, uh, the residents. So, end of my report. I think Commissioner is going to be sending a proclamation to Mike Provenza. He had 26 years of service at JFS, so retired September 30th. For correspondence. Move the reading be waived. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Public comment. Anyone looking to address the board? Bev? Yeah. Hi, I'm Bev Beidelman. I am the Chief Deputy at Lorain County Clerk of Courts. Wanted to share this about the Transportation Committee. I was chairman of that. And we received this information in the mail about a, and I'm sure the commissioners have it too in their staff, but it's about a mobility coordination meeting by NOACA. It's on Tuesday, October 7th from 10 a.m. to 11.30. And they, they want us to join them to discuss the mobility options of seniors, people with disabilities, those of low income, and those with medical needs in our community. It says, we will focus on our regional coordination, public transit, human service, transportation plan for Northeast Ohio, which includes Cuyahoga, Jaga, Lake, Lorraine, and Medina counties. And the goal of this meeting is to start a conversation about our collective success, challenges, and opportunities 
to come up with regional strategies to expand and provide more efficient service for these special population. And I thought since this is like recorded, I could give this information out because all these other counties are doing great. It's we're the ones that really need the help. So I just believe if more of the Lorain County residents would attend, and especially you know our um, executive staff up there that maybe we can get something going. And my husband's disabled. He has MS. And so I really take this to heart because it's just, if he could get around on a bus, you know, and use his electric wheelchair, it, he could be more mobile. And we just don't offer that as much as we would like to because we can't afford it. So maybe this can help get the conversation moving. So they need to RSVP to Jim Thompson by 5 p.m. on October the 3rd. His phone number is 216-241-2414, extension 275. That phone number again is 216-241-2414, extension 275, Tuesday, October 7th, 10 to 11:30 at the Noaka office and that's on East 13th Street Superior Avenue Cleveland Ohio so I hope our county residents that really care about this you know and I know we all do but just make a little an effort to give him a call and just show up big in Lorain County thank you that's better. Is that, I saw that note come in is, is that an open public meeting yeah, you can go. Oh, I mean, I saw it. I have it. I, I have it. I just didn't, it. I didn't read it that closely. I wasn't sure it was a sure. completely open meeting. Yeah, uh, you just call him. I talked to him. You can call. It's, you can go if you care. You know, you can yeah. go. Could you have Sandy scanned it, put it in a PDF, mm -hmm. and give it to Hal so he could put it on instead of everyone trying to remember it? Sure, we, we could also use that really expensive document reader over there and slip it into the document. Well, I don't think it actually goes <laughs> on, on there, though, when it's up. Really? Yeah. yeah, it does. Yes, it does. Uh, does it? I thought he said no. Okay, we'll, we'll get up. Every time I put it in there, he's asked for the actual um, PowerPoint presentation. So. I hear how okay. echoing something back there. Do you want to we'll, we'll, it down we'll and, and Teresa will give it to him? Sure. Thank you. Mr. Kleiber. Uh, just quickly, Commissioner, you had brought up about the salt. I just sure. wanted to clarify. There was a conference call yesterday, but Lorain County, all the cities, townships, including the county engineer's office, we've participated in ODOT's um, statewide bid contract. Our contract is secured about $55 a ton. Teresa just gave that to me, yeah. And okay. So we got a couple of panic calls yesterday. There are counties, that, um, part of the ODOT district that did not get bids. ODOT did a statewide bid and they got about $105 a ton. They're gonna share that with those, but our contract is secured about the $55 a ton. Thank you very much. That's a significant difference. Some of those counties yeah. are really crying about that, the ones who get hit really hard. Yeah, there was there was bids uh, through the ODOT state bid that they rejected up to $140 a ton. Wow. Yeah, that was discussions exactly. So all right, so we're in decent shape at 55. That means right. only about a 35% increase. Hopefully the gas we... prices will go down to offset the <laughs> snow. Yeah, we've been salt prices. I'm back, Commissioner. We're week. gonna start charging you rent. <laughs> is that what's going to happen? They already pay we rent, do. Tom. No, I'm talking about at the podium. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 15 minutes of fame, not 15 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Bailey. 50,000 car happened Monday, all right? We got our 50,000 vehicles. Uh, the winners of the uh, prizes, uh, the Benders from North Ridgeville, wonderful couple. Uh, they'll be coming here to a commissioner's meeting in the near future when their prize arrives and we'll present it to them. Uh, you're gonna present it, well, hopefully you're gonna deliver it because it's quite a large table and recycled <laughs> table and chairs. Those right. are pretty heavy. Yeah, so we'll get it delivered to them, but we wanted to come before the board and receive their gift. Yeah, send us a picture. Yeah, that. Send us a picture. <laughs> that, you didn't get back to them apparently. I just well, well, it. well, actually <laughs> there, was, there was two selections. Oh. Both of you made a different selection, which is not unusual around here, is it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so rather rather than having a more discussion over something that was not really that important, I'd have voted with Lori. I well, actually, <laughs> actually, you won. Wow, that's a news. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> relax for a moment. You won, 
because you're on the solid waste board. So I, when there was absent a consensus, the person that was on the solid waste board, I took oh. that selection based oh. upon that. So your pick was the one that was offered as the. Lori, you picked a glider, a recycled uh, porch glider, yeah. uh, as the. I think it was Lori to pick that, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mine was a keganator, right? <laughs> Yours was a was a vehicle without a lot of stickers on it. Uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it was. But you, you <laughs> sorry, you you did pick a glider though. I probably don't recall. At least that's what you told yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. We having a moment? I think so. <laughs> CRS. But you picked the table and chairs, Ted. Yeah, and and Tom, you didn't you didn't weigh in. You weren't concerned with what it was. Yeah. Okay. Take it in. I think you should just go there and take a picture. <laughs> so the benders will be coming before you soon, and uh, it's a, it was a good a good thing on Monday. Fifty thousand vehicles, wow. and we'll be coming down with a proclam proclamation next week uh, to tell what Mr. Cortez and I have kicked up, kick, uh, put together to uh, celebrate. 50,000 vehicles, a nice proclamation. We got a little party planned. Yeah, we're going to do the, the hot dog. Right? Yes, sir. And we're going to try to at the center. Well, no, I'm not going to be serving, but we're going to when and we can let them know what it is. You'll have a proclamation, but uh, for for the for the month, we're, if you come in, we're going to you can get a hot dog when you bring your each person in the vehicle going to have a hot dog, and when they bring their recyclables in there, and then the things are going to drop off. Just a little bit of incentive to come by. Have a hot dog for lunch and drop off whatever thing you may have previously been pouring down the drain or in the backyard. I've been stockpiling some stuff, so I need to come out there. Uh, well, so we sorry, hot dogs are only for non yeah. non yeah. non employees. I'll, I'll make them dinner that day. The non employees <laughs> get the hot dogs. So, oh. <laughs> so things, that you don't, things that you, you don't use or you don't need, you can drop off, right? If you're recyclable. Well, well exactly. Yeah. You know, I'll give you an example. If you go to the tire place and you change four tires on your car. Right. Some of the places charge you $2 a tire disposal fee. Well, you can bring those tires to Mr. Bailey for free. Now, I mean, it doesn't sound like $8 is a lot, but by the time they put the $8 on it and they put that nasty sales tax on it and all mm. the other things, you're paying $10 to get rid of these tires. And then when Governor Casey trades without a vote of the people? Who didn't raise taxes? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it's a brutal morning here. <laughs> uh, but, two but, but the people don't <laughs> shots in. <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't realize that they can take those tires to the recycling center and Mr. Bailey's crew will take them at no charge to the residents and then we'll, we'll put them into the recycling stream. Uh, I don't know why people charge at these tire places to, for, the, for that, but it's, it's at no cost to the residents. Please come. All right. And we'll have more next week. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Kristen Whiteman, Lorain County uh, Contract Supervisor. I just wanted to point out that resolutions 14, 15, and 16, the end date is supposed to be September 30th, not September 3rd. I believe it's just a typo on the agenda. The original documents should say sep uh, September 30th. And just wanted to point that out if you see a discrepancy. Motion to amend those three officially to September 30th. I'll second. Mr. Kale? Aye. Ms. Aye. Ms. Aye. Looks like we lost a zero on all three of them. <laughs> Bad keyboard. We need to re update some equipment probably. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for pointing out. Well, yeah, you know, those, those abacus late. that you people make us use are getting pretty worn out. Hmm. I think my computer's from 05. They did change the monitor once, but. I don't have any numbers or letters on my keyboard. Yeah, a lot of my, a lot of my letters are gone <laughs> too. Gone too, right. <laughs> Anyone else wishing to address the board? If not, I'll make a motion to move an executive session as outlined by the county administrator. Second. Ms. Kayla. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorraine County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click